Welcome to episode five of six of Watching James Revisited. This week I'm revisiting some of my favourite episodes that I've made over the last couple of years and today I'm going to be revisiting my favourite Pagani design watch. Hello you're watching James. My name's James, you're watching me and I'm talking about watches. And yes, I'm revisiting Pagani Design. Pagani Design is one of my favorite brands on AliExpress because they have a really good balance between good watches, reasonable quality, reasonable prices. They're not the best watches out there, but they're really well priced for what you get. And I've enjoyed a lot of them. But there is one that has stood out to me far beyond all the others. And that is the YS003, or what I sort of consider the Pagani Design Pilot Watch. So today, let's revisit this Pagani Design Pilot Watch. Hello, you're watching James. My name's James, you're watching me, and I'm talking about watches. Today, I'm doing the full review on this little Pagani Design YS003. Now this review is going to reveal that I think this is the best Pagani design watch that has been released so far. Now I understand that this watch may not be everybody's favourite watch from Pagani design just because of the look and the style of it, but I still think it is actually their best. A big thank you to the Pagani design official store on AliExpress for sponsoring this video. Now I did have to pay for the watch, however they provided me a discount. I am going to leave some links to both their official store down below in the comments, as well as this particular watch. So why do I think that this is their best watch release so far? Well, let's think about Pagani Design as a watch company. What do we think about? We think about a really good watches, lots of specs at a really low affordable price. But we also think because it's such good value for money, such a low sort of price what they are, we do expect some compromises. And there's nothing wrong with those compromises. That's perfectly fine. For the amount of money that we're paying for these watches, I can't expect them to be perfect. I don't think you can either. And I'm perfectly happy with those compromises. So I've now owned quite a few Pagani Design watches and really I've identified three main compromises that you need to be aware of when you buy them. Firstly is the bezel action. You know, it's perfectly functional, they work. However, there is always a bit of back play, especially with the ones that I've bought anyway. There's a little bit of movement laterally and up and down as well. And you sort of need to be aware of that. It's nothing wrong with it especially for the money that you're paying for these watches. I'm certainly okay with that compromise. I'm just identifying that that is the first compromise. The second compromise I've identified is just the overall finish. And again, and all three of these are going to be like this. They're perfectly fine, nothing wrong with it when we take into account how much we're paying for it. But the finishing of the watch is fairly basic. It's fine, but it's not really high class. But that is again, perfectly fine. And the third thing that I have identified, number three, is the bracelets. They are actually quite good. They're solid. They generally have solid end links. They have milled clasps. Quite often they have screw links. But when you put it beside something a little bit more expensive, you can see and feel the differences. But getting back to this watch that we're looking at today, this does not have those three issues. Firstly, it doesn't have a bezel to have bezel problems. It doesn't come with a bracelet, so it's not going to have those bracelet issues. And because I think partly because it is a more simple watch, partly they haven't had to spend money on a bracelet, they've then been able to put some more money in the finishing of the watch, which is really quite good. And they've also put quite a few little features in there, which I'm about to show you, that really make this watch something a little bit special. Now those little bits and pieces that I'm talking about, I'm going to show to you now. So let's jump into the review. I'm going to point out why I think this is such a good little watch, and I'll point out those things that I particularly like. All right, let's flip around, jump into the review. So let's talk price. Full recommended retail price for this one is 142 Australian dollars, but on special it's going for around about $120. Either way, I think it's an amazing price for this watch. I wouldn't even bother waiting for it to be on special unless it just happens to be on. I would buy it as it is. It comes in a fairly basic Pagani design box, which is perfectly fine. Comes with this little polishing cloth, comes with the hang tag, comes with the guarantee card, comes with oh, standard booklet and it comes with a watch well you'd hope it comes with a watch wouldn't you and straight out of the box you can see this very simple yet elegant design of this dial this is one of my first reasons that i think this watch is so good by keeping it quite simple they don't need to compromise when it comes to its features let's get through those dimensions on the supplied strap it is 76 grams 
The case diameter is 41.4 millimeters. It is 12.4 millimeters thick. It has a lug to lug of 48.3 and it has a 20 mil lug width. Now this watch also comes in a blue and a black dial version, but you'll see that the hands, the indices and the numbers are then silver, not blue like this one here. And this is why I really wanted this color variation. I wanted those blue hands and the blue indices and the blue numbers. And those blue hands are done really well. It's a nice color. That minute hand pushes out all the way to the minute track, actually overlaps slightly. The same as the second hand, you'll see it, it overlaps that minute track. And that nice hour hand pushes out to a nice length, almost touching the numbers as it goes around. And that blue is done really quite nice here. You'll see there sort of in more of a shaded sort of aspect. It looks like a very dark blue, but then you put some light on it and the blue just sort of shines through. Especially when you look at the numbers themselves, they almost shimmer. All the other markings that are on the dial, including the date wheel, are all just printed on in black, including the Pagani Design logo, Pagani Design name, PT time, which apparently means Pacific time. Well, it actually means Pacific time time if you read it correctly. Um, automatic, 20 bar, 200 meters, and Japan movement. Obviously, the NH35 that's in here being a Japanese movement. And I do always really appreciate when they put the date down at the six o'clock. I think it looks better than other places on the dial. And on this particular watch, how fantastic that they've been able to fit it in and not have to cut into that six o'clock marker. Now being the white dial, it is color match being white. However, those other two color variations, the date wheel is still white, so it doesn't color match the blue or the black dials. And if you look closely at the date, there is a cutaway around it, giving it a bit of a frame. And all of this is covered by a domed sapphire crystal, which when you look at it in extreme angles, you'll see that nice little distortion, which is always very pretty. So it comes to one of my favorite parts of this watch, which is this solid stainless steel bezel. Now I didn't notice it initially, but as you look on this sort of angle, you'll see that it has sort of like a concave shape to it. Now what that does to the watch is two things. Firstly, it really softens the way it sort of attaches to the case. And secondly, being like that, it makes it sort of turn into sort of like a mirror. So when you look at the bezel itself, you get all those lovely, nice reflections. And that bezel is fully polished, as well as the tops of the rest of the case there. And the side has this very nice, very fine horizontal brushing on both sides, brushed and brushed. And you'll see there's sort of a vertical brushing in between the lugs. And underneath, on the underneath parts of the watch, it's also polished. And then we have this nice screw down solid case back with this nice engraving. And on here, we've got Pagani Design, stainless steel, PDYS003, water resistance, 200 meters. Here comes to another one of my favorite parts. Because it is a solid screw down case back, it does provide that water resistance, as well as having a screw down crown, which has the Pagani Design logo on it, but being screwed down gives us that 200 meters water resistance. Of course, inside here we have a NH35 movement, meaning we have hacking and hand winding. Let me talk a little bit more about this solid stainless steel case back. I'm really happy that they've chosen to do this. More and more watches around this sort of price point just go for the standard see-through case back. It's kind of like a, let's just do it on every single watch. And I've got nothing against see-through case backs. I quite like them. But how many see-through case backs do we need on watches this price showing off their NH35 movement? It's a great movement, but I've already got a few watches with that. I don't really need any more. Plus, it's really nice to see this unique sort of embossed logo or design that they've got on the back here. Sort of a little bit nautical, looks a bit like a seascape. This looks like the ocean with a bit of the sky. And they put the De Pagani Design logo within this compass rose. And I really like that they've signed the crown on this particular watch. I'm not somebody that likes every single crown to be signed. I think it really needs to suit the watch. It also needs to suit the logo. But it works really well because it's fairly simple. It just gives it a little bit of extra sort of oomph, I guess. But also it's nice that it ties the watch together. We've got the logo on the front of the watch. We've got the logo on the crown. And then we've got the logo on the back. It just sort of brings it together as sort of one singular package. So it's nice. I've seen other watches where there's different signs, different signatures all over the place. 
but it sort of doesn't feel like it's sort of tied together. Now you may have noticed this little cutaway underneath the crown, just in here. And this is a little favourite feature of mine. Firstly, I think it actually looks quite good because it's sort of a circular shape. It sort of matches then in with the crown and it breaks it up a little bit. But what it really does is when you pinch your fingers together, I'm not sure about you, but when I pinch, my forefinger sticks out a little bit further than my thumb. So when you then do it onto the watch, my finger is fitting into that little concave or that little cutaway and it just gives me a little bit more purchase on the crown, making it very easy to function. If it didn't have that, I think I would really have to sort of pinch in a little bit and it might not give as much purchase on that crown, but I feel like I've really got a good handle, a good grip on that. It's fantastic. I quite like it. Just a little thing, but just gives that watch a little bit of something extra. Now this band that it comes on, well, it's blue. It matches in with the hands, which is quite good. It's like that faux sort of crocodile sort of leather. It's on both sides, which is quite an interesting choice. It means that sort of shiny, slick feeling is both on the front or on the top and also on the back. You'll see that it is Begani design uh, stamped and there's plenty of holes for adjustment. And that is kind of nice having the Pagani Design logo there. So really, the whole watch is tied together, isn't it? Now, the buckle and tang on this are particularly good. It's a slightly different style, which is quite nice. It's got Pagani Design written again. You're not going to be uh, wondering what brand of watch this one is, are you? But it's quite good. And this strap, I think, is a good choice. Firstly, it is nice that it matches in. However, I think a watch like this, and one of the things that I like about a watch like this, is that you're unlikely to keep it on the strap that it comes with. Unlike some nice watch with a nice bracelet where you really want to keep it on that bracelet, watches like this, they don't want, you don't want them to spend too much money on this part of the watch because unless you particularly like it or particularly want it, you are going to pull it off and put it on something a little bit different, something that suits your taste and what you like on the watch, just like what I did. And by doing so, they haven't spent a lot of money on this, so they've been able to put more money into this part of the watch, which really, that's where I want the money spent. I want it spent on here. And here's a loom shot for you. Well, as you can see, there is no loom. Well, let's quickly stick this on the time grapher, see what this little Seiko NH35 movement is running like. All right, we got a 21,600 vibrations per hour. We got a little bit of bead error, but that's actually not too bad. Um, anything under one really is fine. Amplitude is a little bit low, but still not too bad. And from what I've seen, it's sort of running it's about one to two or three seconds minus. That's okay, pretty good for this. Normally these do run a little bit positive with the time, but I'm okay with that figure. This is the watch on the supplied strap on my six and three quarter inch wrist. I do really like how the blue then offsets the color of the hands and the numbers, but it's a little bit stiff. It's not particularly fantastic. I, th I think it's okay. I'm sure it would wear in quite nicely, but it's not really my style. So pretty much immediately after getting this watch, I switched it over to this AliExpress aftermarket bracelet. And I did that rather quickly and easily because it comes with quick release spring bars. I guess they kind of expected you to change this one out. So that certainly made life a lot easier. And here it is on the AliExpress bracelet. And this is the way that I've been wearing it. And I think it looks really quite good. I think it fits in quite nicely, the watch. And you can see that really you're going to be able to swap this out with whatever you want to make it suit your style and suit your wrists. Now let's talk about the legibility of this dial. Well, this particular one, and I can't talk about the blue or the black dial, but how easy it is to read the time. Having that white face and the darker hands, fantastic. Even when I put a little bit of light on it, yes, there's no AR coding there, not that I'm aware of anyway, but I can still see what the time is just by shuffling it around a little bit. So what do I like, what don't I like, and what would I change? Well, um, pretty much I like everything about this, but let me just run you through the few things, just in a quick summary of what I really do like about it. I love the blue hands, those blue indices. I think they're done really well. They're really nice. The distortion that they've put on with that domed sapphire is also very, very nice. I like the shape of that bezel, that concave action. It just, yeah, it just gives it something. You'll see that sort of reflection. It's really quite cool. That cutaway underneath the crown there makes it so much easier to use, but it's also quite nice. 
And the thought and the choice of that solid case back is definitely the thing that I'm really impressed with as well. And the final thing, being a screw down case back, being the screw down crown, gives you that 200 meters water resistance. And overall, that's why I think this watch is fantastic. But what don't I like? Well, there's only one thing that I really probably don't like about it, and that's that little PT time or the Pacific time time. I don't think it actually needs it on the dial. I can get away with it, I can live with it. You know, in reality, it kind of helps make those other text on there sort of blend up towards the center of the hands, but I don't know why it's there. I don't think it's needed. But let's flip back to me now, and I'm gonna give you some of my final thoughts. So obviously I do really like this watch. I think I've said it a couple of times. And this particular watch is going to be staying in my collection. I think I'm going to have it long term. It's also going to pop up in a few future videos, I think. Especially when I start looking at comparisons of what's really good value for money. So, that in mind, I'm certainly going to say to you now that I can recommend this watch for you to buy. Especially when it's on sale, it's going to be really good value. But obviously, you actually have to like the look of this watch. There's no point it being the best value watch on the market if you don't like the look of it. So, if you do like it and you do pick it up, please leave me some comments below and let me know exactly what you think of this watch. Thank you very much for watching. If you got to this point in the video, I appreciate you sticking in. If you haven't already subscribed, I really appreciate it if you would do so. It really helps to keep this channel going. And I hope to see you in a future video. See you around. Bye.